Hello there, and welcome to The Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Vintage Story Unearthed 119. And I've just recently updated to the new version of uh, 119.8, so hopefully that uh, works out for you guys. Uh, today's agenda, I'm hoping to get a little bit further into the Copper Age. I mean, sure, I can I can break stones now, which is great news. It means I could potentially start expanding into an actual house because um, I wanted to kind of build into the uh, the neighboring structures. But more importantly, I think I should be able to get things like a saw or maybe even um, a prospecting pick, which actually none of these uh, this stuff is actually going to help me because I don't have the right molds uh, I'm going to need to make some new molds. So to start with, I will need clay. Uh, and the reason for that is I need these raw ingot molds so that I can then make uh, an anvil. But I also need an anvil too. doesn't hurt to have these things made in advance because if I have the copper uh, already, then it's not really going to make much difference if, uh, if I don't have the molds set up and ready as well. And it, it takes uh, a bit for these to actually cook. And there we have it, one raw anvil mold. Now I just need to make some ingot molds. Now one set might do for some people, but for me it definitely doesn't. Uh, in fact, I'm going to need several sets. I think six is a good starting point for now. I don't think I'll immediately need that much or be that fortunate enough to find that much copper. I mean, I've got some in here, but just not tremendous amounts. Either way, I don't think that I have pit kilns set up for that much stuff. So um, I should get a little bit more. Do I have grass already? I don't. So I'm going to need grass, uh, dried grass, in order to bury the stuff in for pit kilns. All right, I am putting down an anvil mold, a bunch of the ingot molds. Looks like I only made enough space for that much, so I might just start with that. Because I also have a couple of raw bowls up there that I can turn into oil lamps perhaps in the future. Um, or just use those as backup bowls, that never hurts. Uh, so I think this is good to start. I don't have to have those going right now. But let me grab some of this dry grass, fill each of these up so that they are nice and full. Uh, and by the way, the, the new update for 119.8, uh, and you'll notice that this doesn't actually fill up all the way. Don't worry about it, it's fine. As long as you fill it up as far as it can go and you still have some leftover grass in your inventory, then you're good. And then you just put a little bit of sticks on there, a couple clicks, I think it's like eight per. And then that's good. And then I just need some of that, normally I would say firewood, but in this case I have peat. And I'm actually going to use that. Uh, but the new update, it just adds a little bit of like fixes here and there, which isn't too bad. Uh, a lot of them um, were like little visual repetitive choppy mo movements or just weird stuff that snuck its way in there. Uh, I don't have peat there. I've got peat here. I think it takes four per, but I'm not sure with the anvil. So I'm going to take an extra couple layers. I can always just put those back. But yeah, I'm pretty happy that there was like a, a little bit of a bug patch fix, if you will, because the, it was some of the, the glitches were actually really glaring to me, and that was kind of annoying. Um, I just need my torch, and then these will be good to go. So with the, with the peat on here, it'll be done much faster than it would have before. Uh, let's see, just need to light these up. Double check to make sure I don't have any grass in the area that could light on fire. I don't think so, because um, I believe it goes two blocks, but I can't remember if it goes two blocks from up here or two blocks from down there. If you know, please leave a, leave a comment uh, down below. I would, I would like to know that. I have not tested it myself to find out. While I'm at it, I think I'll make some rye porridge with mashed carrot. Uh, interesting. I thought this was spelt, but I guess I, I, I used the rye. Uh, anyway, I'm just making myself a little bit of something because I finished off the pot of uh, food that I had. And I only have so much left here. I am going to need to head out, probably check the farm and see how it's doing. It's only been a few days, but um, I'm not sure if I've... If I've actually grown anything or not. Let's see, where, where is it? It's over there. Oh, that doesn't look very promising. I'm probably going to have to harvest more crops nearby, maybe even find some critters. I know that there was some down in here. I'm going to have to move them out at some point. Maybe even make them uh, some fencing. That, that might actually be a good idea. Okay, so maybe not the most appetizing 
I, I don't know how you would describe what this looks like, but it it's food, so I'm not going to complain too much. Um, and while I'm waiting on some things to cook, because I do have enough copper that I can make some extremely helpful tools uh, in the meantime, I'm going to head out to the little farm area. Uh, actually, let me grab that hoe that I had. Things are growing, but really slow, because, uh, yeah, it's all low fertility soil, which is not good. But I haven't actually found any medium or anything even remotely better at this point. Um, I mean, not, not that I want to keep permanently. I'm, a, I'm very close to being able to get a bucket once I'm able to uh, get an anvil and everything like that set up. So I'm, I'm hoping that once I get a bucket, then I can move water sources where I want, and I can... I can actually start uh, making the farm where I want it to be as well. Though this isn't that bad of a place, it just... Uh, I realize now that it's also open to rabbit attacks, so this is probably not a very safe spot. Hmm, I could do... In my mind I see two options. One is, I dig a trench around the whole thing, and any rabbits that come in, and or uh, raccoons, because there's also berry bushes, end up getting... Um, uh, and I'm putting down my blueberry bush, by the way, uh, end up getting trapped, or I put some fencing around here and stop them from just getting to it, and I don't really care about those uh, critters at all. You know, either way I look at it, I'm going to need uh, a little bit more for some of these other items that I have. Flax that I'm going to put down. I, I do have a few more seeds that I just want to place because I have them, but I want them to be as close to the water as possible, too. There we go, a little bit more spelt. This first harvest, if I get it just before winter, is probably going to be enough to last through winter. Maybe. Maybe. If it even comes to fruition. Um, it might even be a good idea to start adding some fertilizer if I possibly can, which I don't really have much with that at the moment. So I feel like I'm choosing poorly here, but I think I'm going to go for a small trench. Nothing really too big, just uh, one block wide. And let's see if I can actually dig here. And just enough that rabbits will likely fall into it uh, around the perimeter. Now I could, the smart choice in my mind, is actually to make uh, fences. Because then I can always dig the fences back up and reuse them elsewhere. And I'm not redoing my same work as much as I am just like, uh, more or less, just finishing the same thing. Now, something you should be aware of is that anywhere that there's tall grass, like this, um, actually this is medium grass, but anywhere that there's uh, longer grass, rabbits can spawn. Um, as well as, I believe, raccoons, actually, are raccoons in bushes? I can't remember. But either way, uh, they are definitely something to be feared <laughs> if you're a farmer. So just keep that in mind when you're uh, setting up your own set up here. Now this isn't going to be enough to keep out any large predators or anything, but at least it should help me with rabbits a little bit. Uh, maybe. So I think uh, the temporally unstable areas of my base are really starting to get to me. The uh, I'm getting some really weird music kicking in here. You can hear some kind of creepy sounds in the background, and you notice that my gear is constantly still spinning in the wrong direction. Uh, several areas around my base seem to not agree with me uh, temporally. So, again, I'm glad that I, uh, parts of my base, actually I'm going to need to make another shovel, um, are not in it. Uh, other areas are. So, I may end up having to move entirely. But I'm glad I haven't made a permanent home yet, and it's still just kind of like this uh, temporary dirt shack. All right, there we go. There's one small trench around the entire farm. Um, now obviously, I can get back out just by digging one block, but if I fall in there and other critters are coming after me, um, that could be a problem. I could always make some ladders with the few sticks I have, but I'm not really too bothered with this. Hey, actually, here's something fortuitous. A little bit of fish. Um, now, hopefully, I'll have a little snack. Oh, there we go. Got a little bit of raw fish. Now, you can cook this up. Uh, but honestly, you get more food saturation uh, just by eating it raw. So I highly recommend that that is the course you go. And as my protein and vegetables are probably the lowest, it's not a bad idea for me to keep doing that. Now, why do I care about my nutrition rates on here? Because the more uh, nutrition you have, the higher your health points get. So I think that I can max out at 25 um, without dairy. Uh, but then adding in dairy, I think I can get a couple more hit points. 
and that just makes you a little bit more durable to survive. <laughs> the more health, obviously, is uh, not usually a bad thing. Now, I did notice that my uh, helmet that I not too long ago made has taken some hits, so I'm just going to take some of the firewood here and craft it back up to nearly maximum. Now, the improvised body armor, it is made of wood, but as far as I'm aware, you actually can't repair that one. It's the lamellar that you can. Whereas, yeah, you look at this stuff here and it actually has a, a crafting recipe to make it fixed again. So, like, you've got a damaged version. So there, that's another advantage with the, the lamellar armor. Uh, I mean, it is easy enough to make early on if you're not afraid to uh, get yourself some pelts. Don't worry, I'm eliminating the grass that I just mentioned so that I don't have rabbits or other unwanted critters spawning in my little area here where I've got my farmed goods. Uh, and this should be alright. Now, the thing with trapping rabbits in a trench like this is that you may also attract predators, like wolves or foxes or something along those lines. Now, in my mind, wolves are bad, but can be good for leather, and maybe even fat if they're well fed. Um, and foxes are excellent. Uh, if you have the option of trapping a fox in your little farm area, they can keep any critters out of there. The, they'll kill things like all the rabbits and stuff that might get in, or if they fall in, uh, temporarily warp in by accident during a storm, who knows what. Um, but they, they are really good like that. And um, it's actually really nice to have a fox trapped in your, in your uh, garden there if possible. I'm feeling a bit spicy, and I'm thinking I might just uh, check out what there may or may not be in some of these little caves that are out in the lawn. Some of them lead places, sometimes they don't lead anywhere at all, and it just ends up being some kind of mob spawner for uh, baddies, and I think that's more or less what this one was. So, Okay, I'm doing a little explore just to restore my gear and check out the area, and this is good and bad. Um, finding a hen, obviously I can just harvest it, but it was partially eaten by another creature, which implies either um, wolf or fox. And hopefully it was just a fox, because uh, if it was a wolf, I don't... I might be prepared for it. I, I don't really know for certain. Oh, there's my answer. That is a wolf pup. And if it's alerted, it will start barking. Um, and... Kind of uh, maybe even tell its parents, which are probably really close by. So I'm going to head the other direction now. My my cogwheel is looking much better. Shoot, there's another one. Okay, there's little puppies everywhere. Now, you can be the, the big bad and take out the puppies before they grow up. Because after several days, they will grow to full-size doggos and they will munch you. Alternately, you can let them grow up. And then get the drops. From... Oh, jeez, for that. <laughs> from them later on. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is a little bit of a bug that is currently known and being worked on. <laughs> yes, it's a very lovely moose. Um, and it scared, keeps scaring the heck out of me. Uh, I might actually just keep it. Oh, that's a wolf. That's not good. Especially if I'm being like smothered by a moose. Where did the moose go? How? What? Was that a ninja moose? I'm so confused. Okay, well, it might have fallen down a little pit here, maybe. Either way, I'm going to try and take out this wolf, because uh, I really need the extra pelt. There it is. Uh, let's see if I can hit it. Uh, got it. Then just wait for it to come to me and see if I can... Got it! Oh, what a shot! Okay, now to collect all my spears again. When the animal starts retreating, that's usually a sign that you've uh, uh, weakened it to a point that you could probably take it out in just a couple hits. Not always. I mean, sometimes they're just they're really big animals. But in this case, um, yeah, definitely a good 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 sign when you throw in spears because they do high damage. Oh, lovely! I get a lump of fat and a rawhide. That's exactly what I was wanting. And now I have a pelt and no inventory space. Well, guess what? One of those bones is going bye-bye. Uh, there's a bunch of raw bush meat, which would be good for uh, protein. It doesn't cook up very well. but um, And I, I'm just going to leave the corpse there, because then I, if I find it again, I might have uh, access to some bones. And this, because I'm not far from my house, 
I'm keeping this open as a temporary storage measure. Yes, you can kind of cheese it that way. But as I was saying, the uh, the bush meat, it's not the best. Uh, it takes extra stuff to try and cook it. Um, so it's, it's pretty bad. Actually, I just climbed up the wrong hill to get back home. How's everything cooking? Oh, they all finished. Excellent. Uh, so I've restored my temporal stability. I got myself some uh, a pelt, got a few more uh, seeds and such that I can plant, got a little bit of protein that I can cook as well. So I might as well just cook this up. But if you really are desperate and you don't mind burning that extra bit of wood, then yeah. So I think I've got enough flax fibers. I might be able to upgrade a little bit more of my backpacks uh, here. So let me take some of this and make a bunch of these. At least maybe one of them. So I'm going to take eight for now. And actually, you know what? The flax fibers themselves don't really have a purpose. So if you really want, you can automatically start crafting them. But just for the sake of space at the moment, I'm going to keep them as flax fibers so I don't have two different things, flax and the uh, flax twine. Then you can take these and make linen. Now, alternately, you can also make bandages, which gives you three hit points of healing. Uh, this will give you two hit points, so it's a little bit better than your horsetail poultice. But... Um, more important so you might need it for linen and I know that I'll need at least one of those for making where is it this a linen sack uh, which is one flax twine and one linen oh my gosh that is amazing so I should be able to do that to make at least two of them yes that that will do quite nicely and then I'll store the remaining five fibers that should get me uh, two more sacks. Yes, two more inventory spaces at the very least. That one's empty. Oh, that's beautiful. Now, sadly, these don't convert into anything. They're absolutely useless at this point. Uh, unless you really want to, you can decorate them, decorate with them by setting them down. And uh, there we go. I'll, I'll do that as, as maybe a, a memento. And I now have some cooked bush meat. There we go. So 10 to 8 ratio of bush meat. It's actually better than I had remembered it being. I thought that it did a lot worse than that. But I now have a source of protein for a bit. Uh, even if it isn't that saturating. How much does it do? 120? Which is 1.2 of these. <laughs> so it's it's not a lot. But it should help me to get my, uh, my protein back up. That and I've got plenty of other uh, pots of cooked food. It just all wants to spoil pretty easily is the sad part. So with this stuff done, let's try picking it up. Sadly, it doesn't allow me to pick it up if I click on it again with the same thing, so I have to empty my hand. And I don't know why these rotated. That's not how I actually put them down. That's kind of weird. Same thing with this. Huh. Okay. Well, either way, I have the stuff, and I can now put it to use. Kind of. Uh, I will need a lot of space for this. Let's put down the anvil. Actually, can I turn this? No, that's, it only has one way facing. That's fine. Um, and I have the ingot molds, which I could put in storage, or I could set on the ground as well. And in this case, I'm going to annoy myself and put things down the ground. You notice it's getting really tight in here. Once I've made an anvil, I can everything just kind of gets cleaned up, because you can then make trunks. The wonderful world of trunks. But uh, it will require a lot of copper for me to get there. Hmm, and I don't have enough here. That's at best maybe four ingots, and uh, I think it, an anvil I think takes nine. So I am going to need to continue looking for more copper deposits out in the world. Quite often I've, I've head west or gone a little bit north, but then I end up running into this massive forest area. I've been over to the east a bit. I haven't really been up here so much, but I was thinking maybe I'd head south and see what I could find down there. I mean, I did find some silver that way, but maybe I'll just kind of cut across and see if I can get through here. Oh, hey, there's a sow. I've already got some at, ho at home, so feasibly I could try and use this to my advantage. Let's get it aiming towards the water so that when I start attacking and it runs away... I might be able to, there we go, stop it, because it going into the water uh, goes a lot easier. And you notice that one of my spears skipped across the water as well. Uh, nice. Oh, look at all that. I've got so much fat and hide. 
And raw red meat. Oh, lovely. I even have some bones I can take back with me. But a pelt can be used for making fur coat items as well as a longbow, which is something that I am definitely interested in in the future. Um, I just need a little bit of resin. Or do I need a, a little bit of something extra here? It looks like some flax twine and some fat. So yeah, that'll work. All right, so I just need another pelt. It's not going to hurt to have those... Oh, that's right. I don't need to use two of them. It's not going to hurt to have those being uh, turned into uh, pelts at the moment because I do have some use for them. Oh, and look, chickens. This is actually good for um, if I want the, uh, the feathers. Oh, and there's also fishes. Oh my gosh, there's so much food over here. And of course, I'm finding more flax as well, and I can't pass up any flax at all. If at all possible, because... Oh, I didn't get any seeds. Oh, sad, sad. But maybe this one? Yes. It's just so valuable for making so many things. <gasps> oh, hey. I just found some high fertility soil. This is something that I need to take back with me. What a find. Uh, now, if you find the edge of where it was, don't be afraid to dig down as well. That's low fertility. Low fertility. Just check around it to see if it actually, like, has... Oh, there we go. High fertility was actually one block down into the, into the ground. You never know if, if it's, uh, like, following the slope of the terrain. Oh, and it looks like there's a whole bunch here. I'm gonna have to clear this out. Oh, and there's some over here that I missed as well. Okay. And once upon a time, it wasn't high fertility soil that you could find out in the world. It was actually terra preta. And now you can actually make terra preta and you find high fertility soil. And it it kind of progresses low, medium, high, and terra preta uh, as far as how good the stuff is. So that's kind of... and, and it, it aligns with um, IRL stuff as well. Uh, so I really do enjoy finding something like that. I've got so much of it now, I might be able to switch it out. Some of my, my more recently placed crops. It's so pretty over here. Maybe this will be the place that I end up going to. I don't know. I have yet to actually decide on where I'm finally going to settle down until I actually settle down. Now it is getting late, but I do spy something out in this lake here, and that is this little ruin, which I might go have a little swim and see if there's anything of note that is just out and in the obvious open. Oh, there is some bony soil. There's a tool vessel. Oh, that could be really good, or it could be really bad. Uh, what did I just get? A flint axe. Well, and looks like another knife. I might as well switch out my old knife for the new knife <laughs> and then get some air before I end up uh, passing out. Oh, I think I see another ruin over there and over there and over there. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. So bony soil is uh, useful for getting some more valuable stuff. Uh, what I think I'm going to do here is actually put a marker on my map so that I have uh, like a ruin. I, I know of a ruin at least. There we go. And now um, I know that there's some ruins out here and I can come back and check them out. But sometimes in those tool vessels you can find something like uh, copper tools and that can really be a, a nice like speed run or game changer or just a little bit of a, a help of a, a push about so that you don't have to progress quite as slowly. Oh look. Another tool vessel. Oh, it's just a bunch of flint tools. And looking at the map here, it looks like it is a huge forest. That has got to be really dangerous. I was considering headed that way, but maybe I head over this way instead and start exploring on a bit clearer of ground, and maybe I can find some copper that way. Oh, finally, I got across that lake. It was a very long swim, and I'm greeted by a trader being over here. How lovely is that of a find? Uh, let's see what kind of stuff they might have to offer. Lynn? What do you have, Lynn? How are you? I don't know what you mean. I'm sorry, it's better left unsaid. Got anything to trade? Oh, you're a, you're a furniture trader. Look at all this. Lanterns. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna have to come back here at some point with some gears and buy some of this stuff. There we go. I just made myself a hay bed. Cause actually, I don't know why I needed to make one. Do they have one in there? They do. Oh, well, I can bring this with me, I guess. 
but I can sleep on their bed. And I'll see you guys in the morning. There we go. Bright day. Oh, once again, and I now have a better chance of actually finding deposits on the ground than I did before. Also, look at this. There's a bunch of flax. Oh, hey. This is a rare find right here as well. Look at this. We've got a mature pink... Ow! Jeez. Okay. Okay. Back off. Back off. <laughs> I don't... Yeah, I don't want to hurt you. So... Oh my gosh. That scared the heck out of me. Anyway, as I was saying, a, a, a mature pink apple tree. So that pig aggroed on me because it probably has piglet nearby as well but it ran away fast enough so i'm glad <laughs> but there's also a pear tree and a pink apple tree oh so what i could do is break these um little side areas there we go like this here this side stem i could break that bring it back and use it at my base i could also just let these grow and mark them on my map what do we got apple and pear all right so i now have apple and pear marked on my map so that I can come back to these. Maybe as the year progresses, uh, they will ripen up and then I can grab a whole lot of stuff. Uh, but I'm not into uh, propagating them just yet. A farming vessel. This could be good. Let's see if we get any goodies. Oh, a whole bunch of flax. That is great. Um, wait a second. How much does that make? That makes that that would be enough that I could upgrade another one of these backpacks. Let's do it. Okay, so if I take these four, I can make a piece of linen. Put that in place here, that there, and there we go. I now have a linen sack. So then it's just a matter of emptying out my inventory enough that I can do this. Okay, that one's empty, so now I can take it out, put this linen sack in its place, pick everything else back up. And I don't even want this hunter backpack anymore. I will leave it here as a memento that that's where I was before when I ended up getting that extra slot of inventory space. Oh my goodness. Okay, it looks like well, I found a bunch of chickens. But, and there's actually two roosters. That's some pretty deep water, though. I can't see the bottom. I might just leave them alone. Um, but look, there's like a little village camp encampment here. They even have their own chickens. Okay, that's cool. There's a pot of rotten food, but it, there's a pot there. Hi, Axe. What do you what do you have for sale? Do you sell stuff? Um, I don't know what you mean. What you got to trade? You're a survival goods supplier. Look at that. You sell a recurve bow for 11 gears. It's too bad I didn't bring any gears with me. Oh, they even sell linen sacks. Three gears. Oh, there are multiples of you. Oh, this is even better. So, Eric, you're an artisan. Um... That, what, do, what do you have for sale? Oh my gosh, look at all this stuff. Really pretty vessels. Now, some of the tapestries will actually unveil journal entries and lore, so that's really interesting. Uh, but I should still be able to light this, even though it's a claimed space by the trader. Hello! Can I can I light this and make some, some quadruple meat stew? Yes, apparently I can. Something else I just realized is that by having this fire here, your survival goods trader uh, may have just walked on it, took damage, and then punched me because they took damage. <laughs> so keep in mind that any damage in the area is going to be blamed on you. There we go, pot of cooked food. No idea how long it's going to be good for, but I'm stealing your pot, folks. Uh, thanks for the pot. <gasps> oh, finally. It's not much, but it's mine. It is some copper bits. Oh, I've been searching high and low for a very long time, just to give you an idea. I went all the way down here, circled up around, uh, or circled up around here, and now <laughs> that's where I'm at. And I'm probably not going to find much here, but hopefully it's enough. Okay, I'm fortunate. It's actually deep enough that it's below the gravel line, so it, I'm not constantly going to be fighting gravel the entire time. Oh, and it's medium quality. Okay, good. So if you ever do have a doubt about whether or not an ore exists in a certain rock type, let's say that you're in a biome that's filled with, in this example, shale, then there is a way that you can find out if it even exists in that rock type, and that is to look up something like shale, and then scroll through until you start seeing the different ore types show up. And you can see here, poor crystallized chunk of native copper, uh, medium crystallized chunk of native copper, but this is in shale. So you don't need to worry about that. You can click on here 
parent material shale, etc. So you, you can find out if something is actually in that uh, that rock type. <gasps> and just a, a short distance, because it's just right up from there to over here, there's another copper deposit. Oh, and a set of ruins with some bony soil. Maybe I'll get a double whammy and I'll find some loot while I'm at it. Uh, I mean, the copper is loot enough as it is. Oh, this stuff's poor, but uh, at least I am finding more copper. And if you want to know how I'm actually uh, down in a one block space, I can't actually get in there, but I'm I'm sitting. I press the G key, and that allows me to kind of see a little bit better down by my feet, so I can mine uh, where I want to. And I think that clears it out. I'm pretty happy with that. That gave me 23 chunks of poor. Uh, I've got 10 chunks of medium. That's that's fantastic in my book. All right, now just a hop, skip, and a jump back to base. And with this, I should be able to start taking advantage of some stuff. You know how that had some rotten food in the bowl, or in the pot, the cooking pot? You just throw it in water, and you wait a minute. Eventually, that, that dirty food comes out. Now, you can use that rot to your advantage. Um, currently, I don't have storage space for it. Something I neglected to notice was that I actually had more flax twine in this chest over here. So I don't see why I can't just use it to make myself that last linen sack. There we go. So it is time to actually do what I have been trying to do this entire episode. And that is to smash a bunch of copper <laughs> into bits. I have enough for nine ingots worth plus one extra that I can pour into uh, a mold or into an ingot cast. So I'm going to do that too. We're going to go with that. Ten units, and I have six nuggets left. Oh my gosh. I have no idea how much charcoal this is going to use, but as the fire is still hot, I'm going to just toss it in there. And it'll automatically relight. And there we have it. Not forgetting to have my wooden tongs in hand. I'm going to grab the charcoal back out of there. The white hot crucible that contains 1,000 units of copper. And I'm going to head over here, where I put this stuff outside. Now yes, um, in this current version it should... Oh, there's bing bongs coming in. Uh, it should be uh, able to uh, still cool in the rain without bursting. But in version 120 I think that it will end up shattering the molds if it rains. Or there's a chance for it at least. Or if you end up sprinkling it with stuff. But currently... There we go. I now have one anvil and one ingot. Can you guess what it is I'm going to be using this ingot for in the next episode? Tune in next time to find out. So if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and don't be afraid to stop by on Twitch where we stream regularly, including streams of our supporter server, which I play Vintage Story on there too. You can also see the uploads of these live videos on our second YouTube channel, Mischief of Mice 2. Till next time, folks, I'll see ya.